Welcome to Sam Livecast, everyone. It's tomato week. Boom. Is it boom? Boom from Lynn in the back. Your, your knife is still quivering there. Oh, it is? Yeah. Boom. Uh, let up? me take that back. Let me say this again. Welcome to tomato week again, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. Boom. And why, am I, and why am I saying again, Lynn? Yeah, that's not really what we mean. What we mean is like, if you notice, Max isn't here. Max isn't here. Because we are shooting this again. We're shooting this again because? Because technology kind of sucks every once in a while. <sighs> And Phantom noises. Yeah, I mean, it's the audio is just, it, you would not like to listen to it. I mean, you can hear what we're saying, but it's not pleasant. There's so. like this, here, you just start talking, and there's this noise in the background. Mm -hmm, I'm, so when I talk, every time I talk, all you hear is the mm. <laughs> It's awful. So we wanted to bring you the best possible product. We could. We're reshooting Tomato Week. But now Max is at the... the, the what is he at? Outlands? I have I have no clue. I mean, is that what it's called? Hold on. He's at some sort of music phone. festival, right? Yep. He's at the. He told me. He's at the. Well, I will tell you that these tomatoes. Outside Lands Festival. Look better than the ones we had. Oh yeah, these look good, right? So Tomato Week. Look, these are heirloom tomatoes. Do you know where heirloom tomatoes come from, Lynn? You do. They come from the past. They come from old ass seeds. <laughs> It's exactly right. And uh, they're lovely. And they're full of flavor. And the weird, the weird look at them, the weird shapes and the textures and the whole thing are, are what make them super special. I love them. Learn to, uh, learn to find a good tomato, ladies and gentlemen. And if you don't know, I mean, even if you're just going to buy like basic little Romas that we're going to use later in the week, Ask the, uh, the produce person, what is a ripe tomato? The difference between a ripe tomato and a non-ripe tomato is like the difference between a piece of cheese and a Chevrolet. <laughs> They're two completely different things. <laughs> was, Bizarre analogy? <laughs> I was wondering where you're going with that. I was like, I All right, get but let's get this happening because I want, I want this to, to go into the oven so then we can sit and chat a little bit. We're starting with puff pastry. And you understand that puff pastry comes in, in in sheets, in the freezer, it's frozen. You take it out, you let it defrost a little bit. And then you get this, this pliable, hold on. I realize I gotta do my work up in here, Lynn, so you can see. Absolutely, there you go. So here's what you get. You get this thing that's folded in threes, and you just separate it and you unfold it like a, like a sheet of paper. You can roll it out, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can do whatever you want with it. We're gonna take it, and put it on a piece of parchment paper right here so it doesn't stick. I'm gonna fork it a little bit. I don't really want it to puff up too much. So if I, you take a fork and you just do this, make these little, these little things right here. Oh, I should do it this way, right? You can do it either way. See, we're doing this without the, a, a person on camera, so. I'm How's following that? you, um, we're good. So then you just do this. And the little holes are gonna keep the center part from puffing too much. It's a very simple, very simple recipe. Okay, we got those, right? Now we gotta cut to the tomatoes. So let's do kind of thin slices. We'll do some yellow. We'll mix up the colors a little bit because we can and we want to. And you shouldn't always do everything all in the same color when you have an option of doing something else, right? So let's do this. We'll put some of this crazy ass looking red thing in here. And, oh God, I love these things, man. So we'll have some of these slices. Look at the colors here, Lynn. They just have the coolest look to them. And it's not just the look. You know, like it's I would argue that too, it's, it's mostly going to be um, the taste too, right? I should have done some green, but I think I have enough of this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start by putting down a little thin layer of pesto. Just regular, everyday basil pesto. If you had cilantro pesto, it would be really good. Use anything you want. Get it a little bit sort of uh, mushy. And then a little layer on here. Like this, right? Can you see this, Lynn, if I do yeah, this? Yeah, I mean... It's not great? No, I can see it. We can kind of see it from both angles, so I okay. think we're good. I don't want to overdo the pesto, but I definitely want it to be present. And I'm kind of keeping a little border. 
like a pizza, sort of, you know, some place to put your fingers. This is going to be amazing, and we know. We know. We've had it once. Because <laughs> we've done it already. <laughs> we've definitely had it once. Yeah, we've run the experiment. Uh, okay, so now uh, I'm forgetting the other key component to this. Is right here. Is mozzarella cheese, but not the dry stuff. I like this, uh, this wet. What's maybe not the right term? Is it the right term? Well, it is. It's soaked it, in water. It's, yeah, it sits in water, right? So it looks like these, these balls. Hold on. Let me just get a paper towel to get a little bit of the water off. Well, like mozzarella is made in water. Correct. So and it's so kind of like... So it's sort of like its natural home. Yeah. But this stuff is squishier and more definitely more pliable. I think three should probably do it. So we're just going to intersperse some tomato with some uh, with some of the cheese. Gorgeous. And then we'll just cut these guys. And then we're almost there. Oven's on to. Uh, yeah, what do we have right now? Four hundred. Four hundred. Cool. No green? Tomato? Yeah. Well, you know what? I had all these, and I'm thinking that these are probably going to be enough. I don't really need more tomato than this. That's you true. Know? So one more, one more yellow guy there. The green ones are kind of weird to me anyways. Why are you hating on the green one? Because they're kind of they're hard still. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're not as soft and tomato-y as these I are. I hear you. Actually, maybe just a couple of these is going to work. So look at the, see the, the water pour out of these guys. This is actually, this piece is more burrata like than anything, actually. Is it really creamy on the inside? Yeah, it's really great. Okay, so this is enough, right? That's enough there. Okay, fine, these last couple little pieces. I mean, I might as well use them because they're sitting there looking at me. This goes back in. Get this cheese. If you're not buying this, this kind of uh, mozzarella, you really should. So now we grab a giant ass bottle of Arbequina olive oil from We Olive. Nice. You do a good drizzle on top. This, salt and pepper, and then we're there. These tomatoes, as good as they are, are going to be a thousand times better when they get the benefit of some good salt on it. Oh, yeah. Don't think about, don't, I mean, don't think about buying a tomato, cutting it, and not putting any salt on it because you're doing the tomato and you a huge disservice. You really are. I think I'm there, Lynn. Nice. Let me, yeah. just, let me just clean up this little mess right here. I made a tomato salad the other day. Yeah. And I thought the best part of it, even though I didn't dress it really, was just a big pinch of seasoning. Probably more yeah. than you think, because it's kind of like seasoning beef. They're really thick. Yeah, it's exactly you know? right. So, it's don't exactly skip. right. Okay, this guy looking beautiful like this. Hold that up for you there. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. It's going into the oven. Right here, oven to 400. Should take maybe 20-ish minutes, I'm hoping. Hoping not much more than that. Cool. Me uh, just a final wipe for when it's ready. I can come sit. Okay, that's good. This is good. Clean as you go. Don't make a mess. That's it. And now we can chill. Well, it's just like the old days, Len. <laughs> Remember when we used to, uh, hey, is this mic up? It is, it but... Is. Why am I not hearing it? It's not as... Prominent as hello, it should hello, be. Hello, 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 hello. Wow, it's not really prominent at all. In fact, it's not up at all. Is it up now? We'll do a fixtures read while the problem magically is going to fix itself. <laughs> I think I'm hearing myself now. Oh, it's because I have your lab up, sir. Oh, you. Yeah. Oh, this. This is like the old days when we used to have to do when things we had problems? fixing. Well, not problems. So, what should we do? Should we run a spot? Yeah, we should run a spot. Okay. Let's fixtures living, right? All right, we're back and we're all fixed. <laughs> yeah. The elves fixed our problem. We do have magical elves here. God. Yeah. It took a little longer than we thought, but fortunately, it, it, uh, it wasn't very long for you. Just let me say, yes, we love Fixtures Living uh, that will soon be called Perch. They have five new stores opening up. Glendale, California, the Glendale Galleria. Westfield UTC uh, here in San Diego. North Park Center in Dallas, which I have been told is a very, very Tony shopping center. What'd you say? Tony? Tony. 
What does that even mean? You don't know the expression Tony? I've never heard that expression, actually. It means uh, upper end, fancy. Like the Tony Awards. Classy. Tony. Yeah. No. Is that well, how I'm sure that's the... Um, no, those are probably named after a guy named Tony, probably. I have no idea. Now we have to Google this. Do we have to Google this? No, it's okay. Let me finish. Oak Brook in Chicago and Lennox Marketplace in Atlanta. Dude. They're just like... What happened to the small fixtures local thing that we knew? Yeah, well, they've left us behind, Lynn. <laughs> They're getting big. <laughs> they're getting very big, which is awesome. It's cool. I it's mean, it's cool. a cool store. Clearly, they're doing the right things. Anyway, Tomato Week, Tomato Week pushes on. What else are we doing? I don't know about Friday, but we're going to make the Mexican bruschetta uh, again <laughs> on Wednesday. <laughs> that will be super delicious. But more important than that, Today's Monday. You only have till this Friday at 6 p.m. to enter Cook Your Way to Kauai with Sam the Cooking Guy. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a funny thing. People are slow to enter. It was like this last time with the competition. But the majority of the entries came in in the last three days. But Kelly, uh, we were lying in bed this morning talking about this, and Kelly said somebody she works with, whose husband cooks all the time, is dying to enter. And I said, so great. I'm looking forward to seeing his entry. And she goes, no, he's probably not going to. And Wait, I said, why not? Why? And she said, because his wife says he's too scared to do it. Ooh. I go, what are you scared about what? Who, you're just going to stand here and cook. Hey, cooking on a cooking competition is quite scary. Let me tell you that. I've had firsthand experience, believe it yeah, or not. Yeah, but you've had MasterChef firsthand experience. This is different, but I guess if, still if you haven't done it, I, Look, we had Chris from Kaloa Landing here. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you can't hear him because that's one of the broadcasts that didn't work. <laughs> but when I asked him first to come and talk about Kaloa Landing, because who would know it better than the guy who's a director of sales and marketing? He said, yeah, what questions are you going to ask me? I said, I don't know, just like simple stuff, blah, blah, blah. He goes, okay. So I send him a, an email with my address in it, and he, when he writes back, thanks. And he goes, by the way, if, if, you, if you think up what you're going to ask me, just let me know so I can sort of have it in my head ahead of time. I think people get a little stage fright about stuff like this. Of course. I and, mean, and cooking maybe is, is holding people back. But look, the competition was hugely fun last time. Mm -hmm. It's really just think about like you're just cooking for me, Lynn, and Max. That's it. And there's one other person in the kitchen with you. If you win the competition, you will come to Kauai with us. You and somebody. Bring a friend, bring a relative, bring a spouse, a partner, whatever, a parent. You two of you will come to Kauai with us when we go there. Four nights, five days, to Kaloa Landing, and look how gorgeous it is. Look it. We don't want to be inside. Get, get away from the inside shots, though they're beautiful. These are the villas, right? They're like 3,500 square feet, yeah. Look, that's nice. Where, where's the one where you see the inside and the outside? I like that one especially. No. That's one of them. Though you sort of, but you see water in the background. And there, look at that. You could be sitting right there having Mai Tais with <laughs> me, Lynn, and Max. And eating macadamia nuts and coconut shrimp. I and don't know what You can eat, imagine but. the cool ocean breeze coming through that room. Oh, my God. You sweet. know we are waking up to Loco Moco. Oh, yeah. Remember the thing that we made? with the It's the beef patty on rice with a fried egg and gravy over the top of it. We Hawaiian did it on the live favorite. cast when we came back from there. It's so delicious. And we did Spam Week. Which we had Spam Week. So I, I think it's Spam is like a like a kind of a national treasure of Hawaii. Exactly. But is it a national treasure of Kauai? No, the whole, all the islands. The whole, all the islands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So we're going to shoot three live casts there. It's going to be Kauai Week. And you can be part of it, but you can't be part of it unless you take the first step. And the first step is sending, a, for example, okay, here, tell you what. Hold on, Lynn, I'll show you what two people have sent. I won't tell you who they are. Wait, really? Two? I've got, I'm just going to show you two pictures. Don't give away all your guns, dude. I'm not giving away any guns. I'm just showing pictures. I'm not saying these people are in. I'm just saying these are two pictures that people have sent in of their food. So I've got two very different ones. So here, look, a nicely cooked piece of fish. It's really nice. You'd say beautifully cooked piece of fish, mm -hmm. presented nicely, and then look, modest squash tacos. Uh, squ okay. Let me, <laughs> let me tell you. Right. I would really like to try those squash tacos. Right. So would I. I'm not saying you're going to get in, but that's cool. I mean, like. So if this person made in the competition, 
uh, he or she would be making these squash tacos. Here's the deal. You send us a picture of what it is that you would cook in the preliminary round. And in the prelim round, you can make anything you want. Anything. Just like when Lynn was on MasterChef. <laughs> first thing he made was whatever it was his choosing. Right. And then And then in the that. semi, so eight people start. Four people will make it through to the semis. They'll cook two at a time here behind me. The semis then will tell you what the ingredients have to be. You'll have to make something from that. And it's not going to be like pig snout and <laughs> monkey, I don't know. Although that would be really fun, I think. Pig snout? Uh, uh, like mystery box type ingredients where you have no clue what's going on. But I guess we could do that. We could, but we're, I don't think we are. I think it's one of those things that we want you to succeed your be- and do your best and not be, you know, Here's what we did. Too. The second time, the semis last time, we said we don't care what it is. It has to be chicken. Mm-hmm. And then the final round, the finale, um... Dawn and Heather had to cook lamb and seafood. Is that right? No. Wait. Oh, was it? Was, yeah, was that our criteria? So. Yeah, they had to do them both somehow. I mean, I remember the burger. Dawn's burger, and he won Dawn, with that. Yeah, it was really good, and it was it was what, cod, 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 and lamb combined, and it was it was freaking good. It was really good, really good. But don't look at these pictures and think, oh, you know, professional platers are here. I've got Lynn as, as my model, and if I don't make something that looks like that, because look at the tacos are very humble-looking tacos, but they look nice. They've got squash inside. It's, they're interesting to me. Yeah, I think so. You know you've got food at home that you can do. Send the picture of what you would make. Make it look pretty. Send the uh, recipe of what you would make. And a picture of yourself, that's it. It's not very hard. And here's the deal. We're not having you send a picture of yourself uh, so we can judge based on your looks. We're having you send a picture of yourself so when we announce the competitors, boom, 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 we've got pictures right there. Right. That's the goal. All right? All right. I mean, I, what I would say to people who are scared yeah. or who are nervous is yeah. that if you don't do this and you see someone else on the cooking competition that you're like, man, I totally could like beat them or like that's totally my kind of thing and they do really well you're just gonna be kicking yourself right I mean, honestly it's not it's gonna be one of those things you might be kind of like oh, i kind of wish i would have should have could have but you can right. and it's not hard you just got to go no, and send us your stuff um you know i shoot stuff for bed bath and beyond right right um lots of stuff in fact we're shooting this this will be turkey central uh this week turkey yeah. Already? <laughs> yes. Well, it's got to be. It's got to be done early enough so they can, you know. Thanksgiving is not too many months away. That's true. In fact, your wedding is next month. Yeah, and then the month after is Thanksgiving. You ready? No, the, two months. No, after two months later. You yeah. ready for the wedding? And I mean, I'm ready for the wedding itself. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ready for the day of, which is like. The what what are what's the what part are you not prepared for right this second? I mean, look, all the knickknacks, all like the decorations, things like that. Those are things that. I'm always thinking like, well, are we going to have enough people to like get everything set up? Yeah. We, we're doing the thing where like our ceremony is the same space as our reception. So right. we have to somehow get 250 people out and then have people come back in Yes. and redo it. So it's, And it's, how far out will they have to go? Not very far. It's like a, a national, not sorry, like a state park. So Got it's it. kind of a neat, like, you know, you can do stuff. You can view stuff around. It's, it's cool. not, it's not like super enclosed. But Got yeah. it. Got it. You want somebody to do a cooking demonstration while they're uh, killing time? <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, Can't afford you, dude. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> uh, here's what I was going to say. I made this mental note while I was at Bed Bath the other day getting stuff, which they have everything. I'm not saying that because I do stuff for them. They have a lot of stuff there. You know what Bed Bath is really amazing for? Mm. If I was a single guy. Uh-huh. My Friday nights would be spent at Bed Bath & Beyond looking for women because <laughs> it is packed. Sorry, I did not get that. On a Friday? Well, I don't, it doesn't matter. I mean, I was there like on a Thursday morning last week, and I was like, wow, if I was single, here's where I would hang out. There were so many cute women walking around that store. I could not believe it. Wait, that's could true. Could not believe it. What's going on right now that Bed Bath & Beyond's really good at? college back to school back to school so you know what 
And I'm not going to be creepy and say it was the college girls, <laughs> though definitely there are some cute ones. But they're there with their moms. Wow. <laughs> cute women all over the store. I couldn't believe it. Uh, hey, this coming Saturday, I'm uh, the MC of a thing called Grill Fest at the Del Mar Racetrack. Yeah. Del Mar DMTC, Del Mar Thoroughbred Club. There's going to be 24 uh, restaurant food places uh, competing, making all kinds of stuff. Ribs and desserts and uh, seafood and crazy stuff. Uh, your entry to the track gets you in. And for 10 bucks, you can buy five tastes. So if you want 10 tastes, 20 bucks, you walk around. And when you taste, you get to vote. People's Choice Award for Best should be really fun. 12 o'clock to, I think it's 6. Is Say that what it six? says? I don't know. It's somewhere I don't know. For sure, five. But anyway. Lots of fun. Del Mar Racetrack. Come say hi. I'll be there. First time they've done this girl fest there that, uh, that I'm thinking is going to be really successful. Dude, that's the cool thing about San Diego is we have stuff like this going on all the time. The track does a great job. Yeah. They've just finished the beer thing. Like oh. that, I think last weekend was this, was this craft beer event. Oh, I did hear about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, and did you go? I didn't go. No, I couldn't. Oh, geez. That would yeah. be fun. Yeah. Whoops. That's wrong that's shot. No worries. All right. Let's, let me check this thing. Let's do it. Get a sense of where it might be. So, I'd say another couple minutes. How did you think of this this tomato thing? I mean, was it kind of when like a recipe you've had on no, hand? No, I mean we sort of done the we've done like the the margarita pizza thing. We did that burrata thing. Uh -huh. I don't know. I like the idea of. I like the idea of the tomatoes and uh, basil, but I didn't really want to use basil. I want to put it on something and I thought, you know, I didn't want to do a salad is what <laughs> I didn't want to do. And we've done caprese salad before, right? which is super delicious and I think you should do. And I think it's the, you know, if we were playing Family Feud, it's the one thing people would name when you say, like, what do you think of when you think of tomatoes? Right. It's a caprese salad or, you know, like on a BLT or something like that. Right. BLT really is an important. Where are my notes from Eat This? Hold on. I talked about. Uh, the BLT? Uh, no, I talked about um, uh, some other uh, important things for tomatoes. And what was it? So I'm. Hey, we did. Remember the Kaplan mm -hmm. special that we did here? Oh, the. Is that the potato chip? No, 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 no. It was eggs. It's, a, it's onions sautéed with tomatoes, like wedges of tomatoes sautéed in a pan. Uh -huh. And then that goes on a piece of toast oh. with an uh, over-easy egg on it. And then this tomato, onion, softened deliciousness, and then bacon on top. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. You can do a lot. You, you could make a tomato week out of pretty much the stuff we've already done here. We done the grilled eggplant parmesan in the live cast. Uh, yeah, actually, we did. We did. Where we substitute uh -huh. instead of instead of we it did. being a heavy, thick, deep fried uh, piece of eggplant, we grilled the eggplant, and then instead of using tomato sauce, we used thick slices of tomatoes, but just done right on the grill, that soften and shrink and get really gorgeous on top. Yeah, and then and it, melted cheese on that. It was the days when we used to, like, over on your, I'm sorry, this side, I can't even point this way, this side of the <laughs> right. screen. Right. We used to have a grill right outside where right you outside. are. And you would just sit there and then grill whenever we could grill. And then we used to always smoke up the whole place, which I'm sure was great for Which Kel. is always fun. Which is always fun. Uh, we should do that again. The other thing you can do with tomatoes, instead of making a caprese salad, you make a caprese sandwich. No. Same components, the tomato, the cheese, like we use today, slices of uh, basil inside of it, seal it up, butter it, and then in a pan. That's right. mental. It's so good. What about a good tomato soup recipe? You got one? You know, there's a, there's a tomato basil soup on, on the website mm -hmm. that is... Um, Starts with canned uh, tomatoes, and you know I'm a fan of the um, San Marzano. San Marzano tomatoes. Yeah, uh, because I think when it comes to canned tomatoes, 
I don't think anything beats that. Oh, no way. Not even close. I really don't. Why can't I? Of course, now I'm not going to be able to find it. Oh, there it is. How'd you find it so fast? I got you, dude. It's on your website. Yes. So, so make sure that those are the, the 28 ounce can or the, uh, or the uh, San Marzano tomatoes from the San Marzano region of Italy. And it don't, don't think I'm getting all foodie on you. I'm just telling you those tomatoes out of that can kick the ass out of any other tomatoes out of any other can. They would definitely win in a tomato fight. They would win in a tomato fight hands down with one can tied behind their back. <laughs> they would be that good. So go back to that for a second. Let me yeah. remind myself. I haven't made that for a long time. Look, onion sauteed in a pan, olive oil, sour cream for serving. That's it. Pretty much everything goes in the blender. <laughs> Comes out, done. And if it goes in the Vitamix, which, by the way, you just got one, right, Wedding Boy? Yep. You I, know. And it's, it's like the most exciting thing ever. Have you used it yet? Yeah, we actually have one in our house that someone else bought. Yeah. And so that's when we were like, we got to get one. But so you haven't used yours yet? No, no, it's going to sit in the box. So Vitamix blender, which is, I think, like the, the restaurant standard for any blenders. Yeah. You can put all these ingredients in, the tomatoes, the onion, the basil, the olive oil, the garlic, the salt, the pepper, that kind of thing. Turn it on and walk away. And not only does it blend everything really well, but it will continue to blend and it will heat it. <laughs> when I say heat it, I mean like piping hot soup, not going in the pot, leave it in the thing. I don't think you can do that with very many blenders. You would blow out the motor. No, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Pretty amazing. It's crazy good. Mm -hmm. You think we're ready on the tomatoes? Say what? You think we're ready on tomatoes almost? Yeah, I think we're ready on tomatoes. Nice. Oh, yeah. Don't forget grilled cheese too. Basic everyday grilled cheese with thinly sliced tomatoes inside of it. Don't forget about that. Oh, that sounds really good right And now. the BLT. And the BLT is really benefited by a completely ripe tomato. So if you don't know how, there needs to be a little squish to it. That's what you want. Make sure you ask the produce guy. Teach you how to find a good ripe tomato. And if he doesn't teach you, then just say, just, dude, just pick them out for me. I yeah. need five beautifully ripe heirloom tomatoes. And generally, the heirlooms are riper than the other guys out there. I don't know why, but they just are. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, we can run the food intro. I'm ready to eat this. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. Ready? Here we go. Here's what this is going to look like. Ah, hot. Hot. Ow. Oh, look at that. Wow. Now, let me see. Go to that camera shot. Let me see if I can do this. Hold on. Oh, no, this is going to be bad. No, it's not going to be bad. Oh, look at that bubbly cheese. Look how pretty that is. I mean, you can do this camera too if you want. This one? Yeah. Which one? This one? Oh, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Except I don't want to lose it. Uh, let me just try and take it off and put it on this. Yeah, at least take it off. I can cut it too. It looks gorgeous though. i got to have some bite. That's a pretty... That's pretty as a picture, man. Is I mean, there, what is this? Go to this camera again. Let's see. Uh, see, I want you to be able to see this better. Yeah, no, no let's do this. Hold Here. on, watch this. Okay. Hold on. Watch. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what we can do here. How's that look? There you go. Doesn't look bad. It looks a little, a little bright. It's kind of like a pizza. It's kind of like a pizza, and you could certainly do this. You could certainly do this on a pizza, right? I think so. Right, and now I've got to readjust this shot. <laughs> Here's the downside of two of us. Pull out a little bit. Wait. There you go. And I think kind of the thing is like, you, we can do this with two people running a food show. You can most definitely do this for a party or something, you know? Oh, here, crunch? Oh, hear that, yeah. Very creative way to cut it. You're a cute guy, man. <laughs> You're a funny guy. And uh, you know what? They don't know this out in. You no, know, the inside joke is I had told Sam beforehand, like maybe you should try cutting it like this because it looks prettier. But he was all like, you "Just <laughs> dude, you just you thought I was going to cut it in squares or something? I would not do that to you." It looks oh, good. Though. I'm just it really does. Feeling like I'm going to burn myself here, dude. But it's going to be worth it. I just want one bite. One delicious little bite.
Oh my god. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wait. <laughs> okay. Here's what I'm getting. I'm getting the crispiness of the puff pastry, which for sure you got to use. Yes, of course, you could do this on a pizza thing. Oh, it's not the same. It's not the same. The puff pastry is really what I think adds beautifully to this. Then I get the basil. Um, uh oh. Mm. Then these melty tomatoes that are in there that are so great. The cheese. Mm. And I'm getting the salt. And don't forget the salt. Salt's really important in this. All right. Good start. Really good start to tomato week. Mexican bruschetta on Wednesday. Again, Max won't be here because we're about to reshoot that. It's just the way it is. Thanks for hanging out with us. Tell your friends. You've got till Friday at 6 o'clock. Enter. Cook your way to Kauai with us. Come. We want you to be there. Don't we, Lynn? Absolutely. Unless you're creepy. And then we don't want you there. But <laughs> no. if you're not creepy, enter the hell out of the competition. <laughs> no Show creeps up. allowed. We no want creeps. you here cooking, having fun. And you get your own live cast cooking jacket. That's going to be awesome. Chef's coat. What? There's no bad in this. There's no bad. Don't be a wuss. Enter. See you on Wednesday. Thanks for being here. Bye.